Hi, I'm Janan Ismail. I'm a professor in the philosophy department and I'm delighted to be participating in Thunderdome this year. So my area of specialty is partly philosophy of physics. So I spend a lot of time thinking about physics and what it tells us about things like the nature of space and time. So suppose I told you that in the fundamental fabric of the universe, according to our best current physical theories, time has no direction. So it's not that there aren't moments of time, it's that points in time are like points in space and that space and time together make up a kind of four dimensional network in which the spatial dimensions aren't visibly different from the temporal one. So past and future in the structure are like east and west. There's no fundamental difference between one direction and the other. Human lives and the histories of physical objects, so tables and chairs, dogs and donuts, anything with a mass are represented by lines or more particularly tubes that point upward in the forward direction. So I'm gonna give you an image. Sorry. So here is my life with my birth at one end and my death at the other. And the collection of points along this tube make up the events of my life. And here are the lives of other people and other massive objects. And the dimension here pointing up the page in the vertical direction, that's time. And these other dimensions here are the spatial dimensions. Okay. Now, the reason that our lives are all lined up in this way, we've always thought, um, is fairly deep. It has to do with the relationship between mass and energy and the difficulty of accelerating past the speed of light. The result, however, is that we are like ships on an open sea, all traveling in the same direction. So we cross, path, we cross paths when we happen to be in the same location in space, but our lives unfold more or less in tandem in time. So if I'm older than you now, I'll always be older than you. Things that happened long ago will always be behind us. There's no going backwards, no slowing down, no stopping the inexorable forward march of our lives. Now imagine that something happens in our world that we don't understand, a kind of sickness or maybe a change in the fabric of space-time itself. So people, people wake up one morning and they find that whatever it was that was mooring them to traveling only along the time-like dimension is freed. So where before the lines that represent the history of physical objects were all pointing along the temporal direction, people find that they're able to stray from the forward pointing time-like paths. And this loosening of the bands of time happens piecemeal. So people just wake up and they find themselves able to move around space-time arbitrarily following trajectories that arch back on themselves and then go forward again or go sideways and zigzag. It was as though the threads that were previously lined up pointing forward as though arranged in the loom are suddenly unleashed. Now, it still makes sense in this setting to talk about the internal timeline of a single person's life, which is defined by the distance from their birth and the direction in which their memories accumulate. But there's no longer any objective sense of past or future and trajectories of different people turn into a tangled mass of crisscrossing paths. Now, some people thought of this as a kind of plague and they tethered themselves to those who hadn't been afflicted. Others thought of it though, as a kind of release from the bonds that had kept them confined to the forward dimension in time. Now they could travel back in time or they could travel forward. They could travel in circles, revisiting the same moment at intervals. Some people though missed the sense of living lives that unfolded in tandem. And they paired up to keep the internal timelines of their lives in sync. 
Indeed, whole communities were founded that tried to recover time as we know it, inscribing in space-time braille-like etchings to mark what we used to call the forward direction of time. They might take vacations in time-free zones, but they agreed to let time pass collectively as it always had before. They wanted to get old together, to watch their children grow up, to tell their children's children of times long past. They wanted to live the stories of their lives in the way that we always had. So here's the challenge. Tell me in 300 words or less what it's like to live in this new world. Tell me which way you choose and why. <laughs> 